All right, guys, we are back here with another part of the Sierra Elevation Series. Uh, this episode, we are going to be trying to get the sea notch in, um, get a couple of other things maybe mocked up or, or maybe even the tank mount done. I don't know how far we're going to get before uh, you know I run out of uh, time to, to do anything. I've got a buddy at work that's supposed to help me. Uh, he's supposed to weld some of these more critical parts and stuff. Um, he might be helping me with a lot more. We'll just see uh, when we get to that point. But I'm gonna at least try to get some prep work done, try to get uh, some of this metal cut and everything ready to build the C-notch uh, so that when I get to his place, you know, all we gotta do is put it in, tag it together, and then weld it in, burn it in. Uh, cut the frame, put it on the frame, and then we can cut the uh, the frame up. You know. the, uh, the metal I'm working with right here, uh, that's a two by four by quarter wall, way, way overkill. Um, the frame is maybe 10 gauge, eighth of an inch, something like that, and it's just a C channel. It's going to be fully boxed and it's going to be quarter wall. Uh, this is a 2x4 here. I do have a piece of 2x2 two two over here that's also quarter wall. I might do the top of the C notch with the 2x2 two two just to keep that C notch two inches lower. Uh, this stuff, I'm going to get this stuff measured out, uh, try to figure out my angles and my cuts. I'm going to use this cardboard template stuff to try to get everything figured out. Uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I uh, get some of this mathematics figured out and I, I get a game plan. And uh, we'll cut back in uh, later today. And then tomorrow when I go to get this stuff, uh, the C-notch welded up and get it installed, I'll cut back in and show you what progress we made. Got a little math figured out here. I uh, made a template, had it uh, taped together, taking the tape off so I could do the individual uh, pieces on here. But I've got... Uh, two of the pieces that go on the forward side towards the cab, two of the pieces that go on the rear side, and they are slightly different because the frame starts to angle upward uh, right where this is going to connect. And then there's one top piece, and there's another top piece. And this is uh, two by two quarter wall, these are two by four quarter wall. Uh, I've got this angled cut here. The two by two is gonna meet up here and then lay on this. That'll give us a little more to weld. Uh, I think it's gonna come out just fine. I've got those just kind of cut the length. I'm about to pull out my uh, grinder or my angle grinder and uh, cut them uh, off. I'll get back with you and show you uh, what they look like, fit it up together. And once I get everything cut and everything. Well, I've got them cut out. I've got them all kind of mocked up, you know, sitting here and uh, should, they should be identical, you know, within a degree or two. Uh, I'm not the most precise when it comes to cutting with a cutoff wheel, et cetera, et cetera, but there's a little wiggle room. Um, I've already got all the areas that are gonna get welded, uh, ground down, et cetera, beveled, et cetera, um, so that good penetration, et cetera, can happen. Now, you see that gap there and that gap there, those little notches, as well as this side? That is so I can run airline uh, up through here that's going to go to the front of the truck. I even notched that right there. Give me a little more room to run and make it a little less aggressive than trying to squeeze it. Squeeze it just here. It gives me a little extra room. Uh, I've already sanded everything down. Everything's nice and smooth all the way around. Uh, I am going to run some kind of rubber hose over the airline about two and a half foot worth or whatever that'll go through these because you don't want to get a leak inside of there because you're not going to have access hopefully uh tomorrow or this evening the co-worker is going to confirm whether he is uh available uh to weld this up if he's not then i guess i'm stuck doing it myself this you know, it is a diy channel oh look at me <laughs> i was wearing my mask and everything but it does you know it gets everywhere but uh, I'm covered in, in dust and, and metal and what have you. But uh, I'm going to get back with you if I do any more on the cross member on that today as far as building or assembling it. I'm also going to cut some fish plates uh, for these right here uh, to cover up the welds. Uh, I'm probably only going to do one side. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'll figure that out later. The other piece I've been working on is I had some one and a half by one and a half uh, thin wall maybe uh maybe eight inch um square tubing and i had some one by two um 
this was probably uh, eighth inch as well. And I pie cut the sides here you know, 45 and then bent it over, welded it back together. Uh, these, I cut a, a groove in so it sort of wraps. Then uh, I drilled the holes for the air tanks um, and welded it on. Then I got some flat plate uh, and drilled a couple of 3 8 inch holes in it, or holes to accept 3 8 inch bolts, um, and welded it back on. This piece is going to sit, uh, it's going to sit somewhere where all of this is. I got the uh, C notches welded um, and then I got them ground down. I had a huge V groove in there, so I filled it full of weld. It's really, really strong even after grounding it flat. But I'm still going to fish plate it. And that's what those are. That's with a little bit of grinding and uh, kind of cleaning it up some. Like, remember, guys, I am not a welder. So, in full disclosure, that is what they look like before I grind them. So I ain't trying to hide nothing. I'm not trying to be a pretend on something I'm not. But that's another eighth inch piece metal. Uh, the joint comes over here and then 45's up. So this is encompassing that joint plus a little extra down the side here uh, just to give it some more strength. That's the C notches. Um, whether I fish plate the other side uh, the same way or if I do it slightly different, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be the uh, the insides. What's facing the inside or the middle of the truck, if you will. Uh, the outside, I might do a little different. I don't think I can come down quite as far because the uh, the frame rail that it's going on might come up and interfere. You know, something that's, that's you know, a little further up or whatever uh, so that it doesn't interfere with the frame. And I might just do something that kind of encompasses all of this in one piece. I don't know. I kind of, kind of uh, flying by the seat of the pants and going as I go, you know, and figuring it out. And uh, just whatever I come up with and whatever I like, you know, is what I end up doing. This isn't a how-to. This is how I do it or how I am doing it. So don't, don't take this, you know, as a, as a how-to. Don't think you got to do what I do because I've said it many times. I'm not a welder. I've never done this before. I'm just winging it. Uh, so, just wanted to clue you in, catch you up to where I've gotten so far. So, I've got the truck pulled in uh, forward, so the rear end is, you know, easy access. Um, I've got the uh, bumper off. The only way is the door would shut. Thing's too big. And I got the gas tank. As you can see right there, got it disconnected, sitting on the ground. And I, uh, Measured my uh, pinion angle with this thing uh, you know, on the suspension. Uh, it, the truck is not level um, front to back. It is left to right. Uh, we'll see how that goes here in a minute. Just so you know, I got it jacked up on the suspension right now. But that shows you, you know, what it is left to right. But I'm about to take the U-bolts loose. Uh, the shock loose, uh, the drive shaft loose, try to get, uh, and the brake line loose, try to get everything uh, disconnected so I can get this rear end out from under here. Well, I got the rear end out from under it. Uh, got the emergency brake cables, the brake cables, all that. On this side, I've already cut all of that off of the uh, axle. About to do the same thing over here. Uh, then we are going to uh, narrow this thing six inches. Uh, already drained the fluid as you can see. I went ahead and capped off that. Keep stuff out. But got the leaf springs out. Ran out. Got the axle stripped. Um, I've got it cut. Those are the cutoffs. That's one side there. That's the other side mocked up with some uh, clamps and angle iron. I'm going to slide the axle in as well. Uh, 
C-clamp it in, make sure it's uh, as straight as possible. But you can see I got it cut and angled, which gives you a nice little area to weld. How to get a straight cut on a round pipe? Well, jump mill. Uh, wrap it around the pipe, line the edges up, and tape it into place. And that will be a straight line all the way around the pipe. So that you, because uh, you're not going to eyeball this straight. Your eyes, let me tell you, once I had this on there and I marked my line uh, and use this little flap attack here to uh, grind it down to the line, it was meticulous. You're not going to get that good with your eye. Um, so please do yourself a favor. Do it like you should. Wrap some paper around it, get you a good straight line, mark you a reference line, and then just use the flap attack, ease up on it, rotate it, ease up on it all the way around, and then bevel your edge so you get good penetration. I'm going to get this other side mocked up. I'm going to put the axles uh, in, uh, C-clamp them in and everything, make sure everything's good and uh, where it's supposed to be. Uh, might have to nudge it just a little one way or the other. Got the ends welded on, ground smooth. Started mocking up the uh, sea notches I built. Just trying to get them up there so I know I can mark you know, place to cut and slide them in. Got the top cut. Got the sea notch just sitting in there clamped. I only clamped it just to try to tighten up uh, the gaps. That one over there is still sitting on the outside of the, or the inside of the frame. Um, there's that. There's that. I won't check uh, level going across until I guess that other one sunk in. I guess I've got some clamps in the way, but I'm going to show you the top gap. As you can see where I had to cut that and there's a gap. Now I'm probably going to take a slither of metal or something. Uh, now this side I can weld the inside of that tube to the frame uh, going up at an angle there as well as a little you know inside there on the bottom. This one up here I can't get to the thing because it's boxed in. Um, what I'm thinking about is drilling a couple of holes in the uh, frame rail and plug welding it. There's a little bit of a gap because this is, this is wider and then it tapers. So there's a little bit of a gap. You can see, you know, thickness there. So I don't know if that's going to work or not. Uh, got the thing centered. Uh, my axle center was here with lowering shackles. Usually it falls directly on that uh, bolt right there or the hole right there where the uh, uh, Well, this used to be a bump stop. It's long gone um, You kind of see that one over there uh, Mine was a little back But I still centered it About dead in between them two there uh, Splitting the difference now once that axle goes up in other words, the vehicle's lower, uh, you know, that, that's going to push uh, it probably forward just a little more. Um, I might have to you know, have my drive shaft shortened. I was thinking about taking it in and getting uh, all new uh, universals as well as the carrier bearing. All that stuff looks, all that stuff looks pretty factory. This vehicle's you know, 2001, so, you know, it's 22 years old, almost 23. Uh, but, you know, getting it rebalanced and all that. So, might have it shortened at the same time. If it is gonna get shortened, it probably won't be much, inch, inch and a half. But I just wanted to catch you up to where I am so far. 
I guess there you can kind of see how that frame is wider up front. These things are built where the rear end and this piece, um, you know, you can tell, you can see the well, you know, they're two different pieces. So then they plate it, uh, box it in for the uh, gas tank support member or whatever. This one's going to be interesting. It's got that recess. Um, but we'll figure it out. Uh, I'll let you know what I come up with as far as welding, you know, along here. I can weld this from here once I cut this out, but I can't get back in here and weld this. So, like I said, I'm probably going to drill a couple holes and plug weld. That seems to be the easiest thing to me uh, to do, but I might have to. Uh, I might have to figure something else out because I don't want to rely on just that one weld there and the weld on the uh, on the back side here. I've cut that brace right there out. You can see the spare tire uh, mechanism that holds it up and the shop mount and whatever. Well, that used to reside where you see that as well as that. And that piece right there is what this piece is. So I cut that weld and I cut the bracket down here and then I stayed as close to the circle as possible and cut a square. Then I got a piece of metal, cut a square and I've got it sitting there. This is just really cosmetic. This is, uh, this is not strength or whatever, but I mean, you wouldn't want a gaping hole in your brain. Um, now that side I have welded once. I've got some uh, minor um, little pits and stuff after grinding. I'm going to come back in here, weld them up, and then grind it flush again. It's going to be nice nice and clean and, and flat. I already knocked off the rear hangers um, for the uh, leafs. I have not done uh, the fronts yet. but uh, And then I got, like I said, that bracket. Getting that bracket out of there is going to make it easier to weld. Uh, along that area there. Now this side, I don't know if you can tell, but you know there's holes there. Let me see if I can turn that off. Uh, I had four over here, and I plug weld them. Now this, I don't know why, but I'm running a really small bead, even smaller than that. So I ran one, ran a second on top, and a third on bottom, uh, and I've ground this just kind of almost flush with the flame but you know frame but not completely um might i might come back and trim it just a little more um they're booger welds they ain't pretty I, I am no welder but it is uh it's on there this here i cut a piece of metal from some of the metal i cut off the frame and i've got it welded in on both sides i've still got a small piece to fill in there and then on this side, that little cubby hole right there, I'm going to have to put a piece of metal in it and a piece of metal right there along the top and fill that in. You can see the holes on this side. That's what the other side looked like. But I've got a lot more room to get down in here. Like I said, I'm going to be able to weld that area here shortly. I'm going to finish welding up that. You know, I've got uh, those welds there. You know, that's the top there. Uh, I'm gonna get all this done. These are, uh, this frame rail is not 90 degrees. This one is, uh, this one's off just a little. But I didn't wanna tackle, uh, I didn't wanna try to make this straight and, and mess something else you know, along the line. So I just matched the, uh, C notch that I put in with the frame. So this way, you know, it's just a hair off. But as you can see, that matches it. Now, this way, it's just a hair off. This way, 
same thing. So I just made it match. I don't know why this side is different. Um, this truck uh, has probably been you know, wrecked or something at some point, I guess. Um, you can see this side, it's not like that side. Uh, oh, let me, let me turn this, let me show you the frame. So you see that this is across the top or dead even. Uh, you know, front, they line up front to back. They're both, I, I'm going to call it 90 degrees, but I just showed you one side slightly different, but the frame rail and everything, they're, they're perpendicular or parallel rather with the uh, frame rails that are on the truck. Maybe I should have tried to straighten them. I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm the first time doing this. I ain't got a clue, but I wanted to leave uh, this cross member in as well as the uh what do you call that hitch you know just to keep the rear end together where it was i didn't want it to move or shift you know all the heat that i'm putting into it from welding i didn't want it to warp it or twist it or, or whatever and you can see i got the jack under it's all it's doing is just holding it there it's no there's no real pressure um it's just you know holding it there but now i've already started you can see the line i've already started cutting it i'm going to cut it uh, you know the rest of the way once I cut the frame but this bottom I don't know if I can get a good view the bottom of the frame is considerably wider uh, than the top so I'm going to trim that down and I've started this side as well but uh I'm to the hitch I gotta get this hitch off whoever put this hitch on this uh hitch on it puts the bolts in upside down you stinking idiots so I got to cut them out uh, to get the hitch off. I've already cut the back ones off and already cut the uh, front ones off. So I just got the middle ones left. I have still got to put the axles in the rear end, uh, bolt up the calipers with the rotors and make sure everything is lined up uh, and that the rear end is in the differential good enough. Um, then I'm going to put it up under here. I'm going to take them uh, take them bump stops out right there. Um, that one there, well, one there, or at least the caps for them. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to jack the, uh, the axle up under here and rest it on the bottom of the frame uh, and get it you know, centered left to right and get my pinion angle set and to the frame. I'm going to use that position as my ride height. Uh, and I will take all the brackets for the uh, three link and all the tabs and everything um, and start from there. Uh, use that uh, as my, you know, medium point. Because uh, I still have eight inches of lower travel uh, to go from that, you know, bottom of the frame. And I don't know how much lift, you know, we'll get, but at least it'll be somewhere sort of in the center. Uh, I've seen on other YouTube videos that that's what they suggest. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, the pieces you get with the infamous uh, three link kit for these uh, 99 to 06. Uh, supposed to be under rail uh, kit. So there's your bag mount and your hanger. That's your underbar there. And my understanding is that it was going to go under the rail. Um, no, that's not uh, according to infamous website of uh, install library link on their page. This. is how it gets installed. I've got these uh, just tacked in place back there. I don't know how good this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to show you. I've got that bottom mounting hole lined up with the top mounting hole. 
that I would thought would have welded underneath the frame rail. Right like, like the frame would have sat right here. And that this arm wouldn't be on the outside of the frame. It would be under it. But according to their website and their install image gallery, whatever, this is what they have done. There's only two videos on YouTube that I can see that have you know, a decent amount of info. Sea uh, God uh, is one. He's doing a newer version of this truck. Uh, and he's got a quad cap. Uh, and he has plates like mine. Um, and then uh, Carport Customs, uh, they have a different kind where this is almost a cup and it, you have to cut out the frame and mount it you know and you know inside the the frame rail and it, and it moves the bag up about gosh i don't know two inches or so but i've got several inches there but i don't know by the time that goes up to that seat notch that i'm going to have all that much room i'm going to cut this side off but before I do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the other side first. I'm gonna mock it up the way I want. That way, just in case there's an, an unforeseen issue, um, this side's already mocked up if I have to go back to this way of doing it. Uh, the other side, it might be a little more complex because you have you know, your gas tank and stuff that's gonna mount over there. And I really don't like the way this bar is this angle, but this is this angle and it's going to have the bag squished more on the front than the rear um, and i know that when this goes down to raise it up even higher that that's just going to complex the uh you know the, the situation more so i want to come up at least in a, a half inch or so higher here than i do here and do somewhat of a level cut i might not even have to you know cut this part right here um, I might be able to just come up, you know, three quarter of an inch and then come straight across. And that might give me my clearance and uh, whatever. But before I decide how high I'm going to go, I'm going to get the actual bag out of the boxes. And I'm going to mount it uh, in the bottom hole and try to make sure I got these uh, mount holes correct. Uh, and just so you can see, I already got the. Uh, the three link just tabs uh, packed in as well. So I've got that part set up for now. All right. I tried to start mocking this side up and doing it uh, under the rail here, like directly under the rail. Uh, the gas tank, if you're running a fuel cell, you, know, you can get away with it. But the gas tank comes right up to the uh, frame rail and it would have to inset, gosh, I don't know, an inch and a half or so uh, inside the frame in order for it to work true under the rail. I guess that's why uh, they designed it the way they designed it. So I've got this one mocked up. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. The way I originally had it tacked on here, I could not bolt, oh, oh come on camera. I could not bolt my wheel down all the way. And right now, I was untacked it, cut it loose. Uh, and I've got maybe, maybe a quarter inch uh, between the bar and the wheel and tire. I mean, even the little nipple knobby things are hitting. And that's how close it is. But, I've got a bag kind of mocked up in here. I'm trying to keep, you know, the bolt from the center of the bag that's on that bar. It was, it was directly kind of in line with the frame. I'm trying to keep it over. And I even moved this plate back some, about, I don't know, probably a five sixteenths or so. Uh, cut that loose, got it moved over a smidge. Um, so I'm still thinking, I don't like this angle. And the further this goes up, uh, you know, the more complex it's gonna get. And once it goes down uh, all the way, I think it'll squish out a little better. Um, I wanna move this back, or yeah, back about a quarter of an inch. 
and I'm gonna take it up more level with the bar. Um, right now it's going in the opposite angle of the bar, you see. I want it to be less of an angle. So I want to twist this plate up some. Well, before I do all my plating and all that stuff and I finish welding and all that, I, I'm gonna tack it in, everything, and then I'm gonna cut the middle section of the frame out uh, of the C notch out. And I'm going to see how far I can jack this rear end up, how much this bag will give. If y'all are gonna put this kit in from Infamous, it's supposed to be further outset than mine uh, is where uh, it, it's supposed to be. But because I narrowed my axle, and I recommend if you're going to narrow your axle, don't go more than two and a half inches per side, uh, unless you're going to do a different kind of, uh, you know, if you're doing a four length or, or something, you know, maybe maybe there's a better way of doing it. But uh, this kit, I wouldn't recommend. Um, nothing wrong with the kit, I'm just saying the fitment issues I'm having. Once I get that side mocked up, I'll take a bunch of measures, transfer them over here, and rinse and repeat. Well, there it is. Frame's cut. Axle is uh, it is almost touching. That's probably where it'll be when the frame touches. The bags are squished out now. Still a little more on the back side than the front. Uh, but it would have been way worse had I not cut it up. I'm still a little worried about the back space of the wheel, how much side to side motion, etc. I might order me some quarter inch spacers or some eighth inch spacers and uh, put them on uh, and just space the wheel out just a tad more. I'm going to wait and see once I get the wheels on and everything what it looks like, how near the same. But uh, got that bag bracket just sandwiched in there for now. Still got to trim it and stuff. But uh, I'll put these little magnet deals on it to make sure it was somewhat uh you know level i left just enough room for that bolt to go in but it is not much now that bracket here i'm gonna give you all a few measurements uh, so from here from the edge of the frame to the outside edge here is exactly two inches and then i pulled a measurement from putting the tape measure on this side of this and pulling it up and to the edge is one and a half inches. And you can see the back bracket is more or less parallel or uh, level, whatever, with the outside of that uh, uh, round tank cross member that you know, used to be the uh, gas tank member and cut it off. So when I went to the other side, I just took those same measurements, so like seven and a quarter uh, long and then angled it down. Uh, did the same thing over there. Now that bracket I did not cut. Uh, I, I cut it you know, 80, 90 percent of the way through and then just finished, uh, you know, took a pair of vice grips and just bent it up into place. Uh, this one, that piece right there, is what's going to get welded on that back side. And I'm going to make some uh, gusset and stuff. I'm going to weld it from the inside and outside, all that good stuff. I still got a plug weld. I figured now the frame's cut, I can maybe hammer that in a little tighter. I don't know. Maybe, let's see if I can get in here. Maybe just welding, uh, you know, put a pair of vice grips in that and try to close that gap. And just welding along there will be strong enough. I'm still going to, I don't know how strong they're going to be because of how much gap there is between that and that and there. But I'm still going to fill them with weld and sand them smooth like I did that one there. But uh, she's up there. That axle is high. 
show you the squish out on this side. The only thing I'm really worried about, let me see if I can show you, see if I can get you level right about there. Yeah. Was it squished out? It is right at where the frame was. So I'm hoping the gas tank and it aren't going to rub. Anytime it has any air in it and we're driving down the road, it'll be fine. Um, when, it, when I pancake it, it won't really matter much. Um, but I think we'll be all right. You can kind of see that bottom frame rail on the other side. Uh, that back, th this one back here is kind of flared out. I got to beat it in just a little. But you can see that one right there. Uh, when I back up and it disappears, well, so does the bag. So it's, it's pretty much flush. And I mean, I pushed this thing as much as I felt like I could uh, to get away with wheel clearance. Um, it was a compromise. If you're not narrowing your rear end, you, know, you can set it up any other way you want. Uh, if you're narrowing your rear end, you know, two and a half inches or less, uh, you'll be fine. So when you do that three inch mark, I don't know it is. I've got maybe a quarter inch clearance now. And that's only because I moved it over. Uh, let me see if I can show you this way. So my measurements from this half to the to the inside of that plate, the level part of that plate right there, uh, is three and three quarter on this side, four inches on this side. Uh, seven inches, seven and a quarter. Uh, same on both sides. And that's what I had to put it at. I think it's supposed to be about, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch further out. Um, you know, out towards the edge of the, of the vehicle. But I, I could not make that work. So, that's what we got. I'm about, I gotta get in here and I gotta clean, uh, you know, the inside of this here. So, cause I'm gonna be welding gussets on the inside and outside. Uh, and I'm probably gonna be boxing the frame about where that uh, uh, angle finder is, somewhere right in there. I'm gonna put a, I don't know, three, four, five, six inch plate. I've got that piece of metal right there that I'm gonna say is quarter inch. It's a, it's just a piece of scrap I got, you know, but I can get, you know, two or so pieces like that, you know, and just plate it, uh, cut it to fit inside those rails on the outside of this rail, probably the inside because the gas tank again, but, uh, you know, get them in there and then weld them up. I think that'll help keep that, uh, frame if there is a you know a reason because this is pushing oddly that you know the frame might want to twist or have a weak spot you know, i'm gonna stiffen it back up real good not gonna have anything to worry about i really want to the whole reason i cut those things in my c notch is i really want to run my airlines up through here go across the top come out and come around come out to the bag over there i don't know if that's what's going to happen or not um And I still got to figure out what my, I mean, I've got a hole right here, but I need the, I need it to go and, and angle pretty. There's a piece of metal, you can see it right there. It's got a 90 pretty hard, pretty quick. And I think that's going to cause it to rub and chafe on that hole there, that factory. Well, I don't even know what that's for, a different kind of vehicle than this, I guess. But, uh, so I'm going to figure out my air line. I can't go on the outside of the frame because the tire and it are real, real close. So I'm gonna to have to go in, but I just don't know that I'm gonna be able to make that quick 90. So I might have to come in and run it uh, you know, along the inside and just kind of loop it up on here. But I don't wanna do, I mean, I don't wanna see it because I've still got a front airline that I've gotta run because my tanks are gonna be you know, back in this area. I done jacked it up a couple of times, lowered it a couple of times. You know, I, it seems like it's working just fine. Uh, I am probably going to order me some new uh, brake covers, whatever you want to call those things, uh, which means I got to take these axles 
back out. But I got to take the whole rear end uh, out anyway so that I can finish welding those brackets on uh, completely. And I don't know what I'm going to do uh, about shocks. They're supposed to, supposed to drill a hole and they send you a bung you weld in. And it's supposed to ride. You know, let me weld one on here. My tire is not going to allow it or my wheel or whatever you want to call it, it's not going to allow for it. This one right here is inside my wheel. I mean, my wheel comes, I don't know, about there. So I'm not going to have room for a shot. And I thought maybe I would, you know, do it on the inside. But I had to check and make sure what the gas tank's doing on that side. Uh, if, it, if the gas tank is not interfering, because uh, I, I basically want to mimic the angle of the, uh, of the uh, CNOPs there uh, and you know go down and bolt it up you know what have you weld it onto that down there and, and then up here but uh, that's gonna be another day's project today is uh, Christmas Eve happy holidays everybody I mainly wanted to get it to this point and pretty pretty content with the fact that you know it worked I hope y'all are enjoying this. I'm not doing any time lapse and stuff because I figured this is going to be a long enough video without throwing that kind of stuff in. Anyway, y'all have a good holiday. Tell the big man I said hey. Later. <laughs>